Thank you, Pastor Garen. It is uh, such an honor to be here today on Pentecost Sunday. So the other day, I put up our old baby swing on OfferUp. And uh, someone, someone offered to buy it, and so I packed up the whole family in the van, and we headed to the Starbucks parking lot, and we met this brand new mama. Uh, she drove up with her brand new baby in the back seat. I got out of the van, met her, saw the baby in the back seat, and immediately thought to myself, ah, I remember the days. Uh, the days filled with tension because you're so joyful. Every time you look at that little baby, it's just like, oh. And then it's also tension because it's so frustrating when they can't sleep and you are exhausted beyond any any description of what it means to be tired. Uh, I remember how, how uh, it's a joy to hold your child and it is excruciatingly painful for them to scream directly into your eardrum in the middle of the night while you're trying to rock them to sleep. I remembered all of those really good times. And uh, I gave this woman, you know, the, the swing, and she paid me. And <clears throat> as we were driving away, I noticed a bumper sticker in the back of her car. And it stood out to me so much. And I have just been thinking about this bumper sticker ever since. And it said this, pleasure seeker. And I thought to myself, I, I don't think I've ever met a self-proclaimed pleasure seeker. I mean, I know that our culture is full of pleasure seekers, and I know that pleasure seeking is like a thing for us. Like that, that is, I mean, that is a serious, that's a mentality. <laughs> uh, but I've never like actually seen a bumper sticker that said that. And I thought, I wonder if like what that bumper sticker means to her now that she has a brand new baby. Like, should you remove that? <laughs> because it, it, it might be not like relevant anymore. Because when you have a new baby, you got to say goodbye to a lot of, of pleasures. C come on, all of you parents listening, like all parents watching right now, I know you're not able to actually watch because there's kids running around your house. That, that's us, you know. So there's a lot of pleasures you got to surrender when you have kids. And so like, is this bumper sticker now out of date because you've had kids? And then I was thinking, wait, no, no, no. Maybe this bumper sticker, she put it there when she had her kid and the child is the pleasure. Or most likely it was there before and the pleasure that she was seeking was why she has a baby in the first place. Yikes. Let's go there. Uh, pleasure seeking. Oh, man. Um, I remember the days. I'm sure now she looks forward to the day when uh, she does not have, have that responsibility. But I, not have all of the responsibilities that go with being a parent. I'm sure right now there are a lot of things that she had to surrender. And she's probably looking forward to that wonderful day with hope when she will have her freedoms again. We're talking in a series about hope, about looking forward to things that we hope for. We're actually wrapping up the series today, uh, hashtag hope wins. This series has been an incredible encouragement, a source of life for us as our whole world is turned upside down. And uh, I, I want, we're gonna wrap up the, the series today. You can turn to Titus chapter two, um, if you have a Bible, I encourage you to grab one, even if you're at home, you know, uh, you just, just pull it up and get the Bible in your hand, um, if you can. It says this in Titus chapter 2, verse 12. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom and righteousness and devotion to God while we look forward with hope. While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day. To that wonderful day. When the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. I look forward to wonderful days all the time. 
I, I'm sure you do too. What, what wonderful days do you look forward to? Um, for me, I look forward to the wonderful day with hope <laughs> when I go back to my honeymoon spot in, in Puerto Vallarta. Oh man, I just, I have this constant image of when I go back there, I'm going to go to that same spot on the beach, lay next to my beautiful wife and look down the beach and see one of the staff of the resort walking towards me barefoot with his cool sun hat carrying chips and guacamole for me to eat on the beach in the sun. Like I look forward to that day someday, hopefully, <laughs> when I go back to, to Puerto Vallarta. And I'm sure you do too. I, 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 I think that all of us uh, have days that we look forward to with hope. Um, you know, when you lived at home, maybe you're watching and you're, you're in middle school, you probably look forward with hope to the day when you get a license to drive. <laughs> and, and then finally you can have all that freedom. Or maybe you're in high school um, and you're looking forward to the day when, man, I can move out and I can just just do what I want, man. I can eat ice cream at 3 a.m. Doesn't matter. I just do whatever I want. Uh, maybe, maybe you've already done that and you're like looking forward to the day when you finally get settled into your career, that job that you've always wanted. It's just the one that you've been, you know, working so hard to get. Or maybe you're there and you're looking forward with hope to that wonderful day when you get the promotion. Or maybe you're single and you know exactly what day you're looking forward to. That wonderful day when you meet that special somebody. And then you look forward with hope to that wonderful day when you're married. And you look forward with hope to that wonderful day when you have kids. And you look forward with hope to that wonderful day that those kids move out. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you kids that want to move out of, of your parents' house, maybe you actually don't really want to move out, and it's your parents that are looking forward to that wonderful day. <laughs> I'm saying all that to say I, I, I'm pretty sure you're, if you're watching this today, you look forward to wonderful days ahead with hope. I don't think that's wrong. The Bible does not condemn that. Um, it's good to have hope in the days ahead in this life. But as you are aware, I'm sure you know by now, time and maturity tempers our hope. Like we, we learn, you know, not to get our hopes up in everything. And we learn to be realistic, and that's good. That, that's a sign of maturity. Um, and being spiritually mature means being able to enjoy the blessings of God that we hoped for now, but not needing them to have joy. Does that make sense? Let me say that again. Being spiritually mature means being able to enjoy the blessings of God now without needing them to have joy. So it's okay to hope that God blesses you with that special somebody someday. It's okay to hope that God blesses you with a family and that new career and that job and all this, you know, all that different stuff. It's okay to hope in that. But our real hope that we base our whole life on are not in those things. And, and being spiritually mature means being able to enjoy those blessings of God while at the same time not needing them to have joy. Um, we look forward, instead of to those things, we look forward to a different day. We look forward to what we just read in Titus 2. We look forward to the day of the return of the King, Jesus. Um, why would we, why would we change our hope so drastically from pretty much everybody else on the planet? Why would we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when Jesus returns? It's, it's actually not that difficult to understand why it's so important not to put our hope in the wonderful days ahead in this life. Think about this. This life is filled with disappointments. If you've been on the planet for more than a couple months, you know what I'm talking about. Nobody foresaw this pandemic, and everybody at some level has experienced some serious missed expectations. 
We had some hopes that were high, and this pandemic has changed things. And it was totally out of our control. It was nothing, it was not like, obviously, you know, there's, there's like one guy who maybe you should have like washed your hands or whatever before you exited the lab. We're not going to go into there. <laughs> but, but, but for the most part, we were not in control of that. Life is full of things that we can't control. And so for us, we get our hopes up in things. We get our hopes up in like, if I could just get that job. But sometimes you can't, you can't control whether you get that job or not. You could have the best resume ever. It's not going to guarantee you get that job. I've been, I've been noticing on Disney, like uh, the more Disney movies I watch and more shows that I watch, I'm not trying to slam Disney. It's really just pop mentality, pop culture mentality that, man, if you just work hard enough, if you just like set your mind to it, you can do and be whatever you want. That's a lie. It's a lie. A total lie. If you're not good at math, you will not be an astronaut. It does not matter how hard you try. If you, if you cannot add, you will not be an astronaut. If you, if you are not good at sports, if you're just not there, you will not be an all-star athlete. That's not what you were made for. So it is wrong to get our hopes up in just whatever I want, I should be able to have it. If, if you've been on the planet for a long, any time at all, you know that just because you put your hope in something does not mean you will get it. And it is true about all things in this life right now. Just because we hope for it, just because we want it, does not mean we will get it. And there's an even more sober truth for you this morning. <laughs> Every single life is going to end in one of two ways. It's going to either end in death, which is not pleasing. I think about this. Uh, we have tried in this culture lately to dignify death, to make it not seem as terrible as it actually is. But death is our enemy. It's not the friend of humanity. It is, it is, it is death to you. It is the end to everything that you have worked for. And it hurts everybody in your family, hurts everybody in the world. It is not our friend. And every single life will end in death or it'll end in the second coming. This life as we've known it will be over. And in the second coming, there will be judgment. And if we have put all of our hope only in the things of this life, and the judgment comes, my friends, we're, we're out of luck. Like, we're done. It's over. So you see why it's, it's not really difficult to see how putting your hope in the things of this life are not very useful. It's not very helpful. And we need, to be, we need to be very careful with that. We need to set our sights again on that wonderful day, Jesus coming back. Jesus coming back. It's, it's Pentecost Sunday, and I'm so excited to just, for the rest of this message, I'm just going to talk to you about a couple of things that will happen when Jesus comes back. And I feel like it's so appropriate on the day we celebrate of the greatest revival in human history to talk about what that revival was pointed at, which is the return of the king. So I feel like it's totally appropriate, and I'm so excited to share it with you. I think one reason why we don't really talk about the return of Jesus very much is because we don't really understand it. We don't understand what's going to happen. Most of the time, what I hear from people who believe in Jesus, this is their hope. It's so inspiring. Someday I'm going to die, and I'm going to go to heaven. That's my hope. And that's great. That is not, that's not nothing. That's definitely not nothing. But guess what? That's not everything. There's actually a ton more than just you dying and going to heaven. There's an incredible amount more. One of the things that will happen when Jesus returns is Christ will reign supreme. He will reign supreme over everything. All dominions, all authorities, spiritual and physical, on all dimensions, things in, in the heavens and things below, every single thing will be under his 
authority. Our president will bow before him. All the presidents of all of the nations will bow their knees before him and proclaim that he is Lord. Every single person on the planet will see that Jesus reigns. He is the one who is in charge. Check this out. This is Ephesians 1, 9 through 10. God has now revealed to us his mysterious, uh, his, his mis- mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. And when that happens, all of the followers of Jesus will reign with him. All of those who have been persecuted for the name of Jesus will have a reign, will have authority. Another thing that will happen when he returns is the resurrection. (laughs) Check this out. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53 says this, but let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. That's referring to when Jesus returns. Um, uh, For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. So there's going to be a resurrection. Like, people who died will raise to life. It's crazy. And we who are living will also be transformed. So it's not just raising um, from the dead as we were before, but for our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Now that's a pretty that's a pretty intense theology to discuss. I, I am aware. I, I remember I was I was in CrossFit way back before the pandemic. <laughs> I haven't been there for a while. I was in CrossFit and for some reason somebody said something and I was like, yeah, I'm just prepping this body for the resurrection. <laughs> Cause I knew that like when 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 a follower of Jesus is resurrected, they are resurrected imperishable. A meaning we're, we're res- resurrected immortal. Uh, we, we have a glorified and a perfected body. And so for some of you, and that might sound kind of strange, and, and maybe if you've never heard this part of our theology before, uh, what, you might be wondering, what's the point of that? Well, you need to know that our bodies matter, and God also cares about our bodies. You will have it for eternity. We should take care of it. And also, all of the things that are wrong with your body and with my body, this is the the hope that we have. It will be made right. It'll be corrected. Now, if you have a really good body like mine, (laughs) you might be like, I'm close there. I'm almost there. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I got plenty of things. Um, But if you have a body that has a disease or a mental disorder, or something genetic, this hope means a lot to you. And it matters to Jesus. This hope of the resurrection means that everything that is wrong with our body that hurts, the pains that we have, the degenerations that we have, the genetic disorders, everything that is wrong with us, God will transform into the body that he always intended for us to have. And it will be perfected and it will never face death. In this same uh, uh, chapter in 1 Corinthians 15, if we were to just keep reading, we would see that Paul, who wrote this letter, talks about death being destroyed. Death being swallowed up in victory. The death of death in this, the resurrection, which is part of the glorious hope, the wonderful day that we look forward to. And I just, I think about, I, I mean, I have friends who have mental disorders. And it's like, we, you know, I just want to encourage you today that you can look forward with hope to that wonderful day. And that day justifies the pain that you're experiencing now. God sees it and he will transform it 
on that wonderful day. Do you see how when we start talking about this, all of a sudden we start wanting this wonderful day more and more? And how it even overshadows the other wonderful days that we think that we want, going back to Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> Another thing, and I think this will be my last one, is uh, what will happen on, on the day of Jesus' return is this, the judgment. <laughs> and you might be thinking, that's not something to look forward to. <laughs> uh, check this out. This is Romans chapter 2, verse 5. Uh, halfway through verse five. For a day of anger is coming when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. He will judge everyone according to what they have done. He will judge everyone according to what they have done. He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good, seeking after glory and honor and immortality that God offers. But he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves, who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness. A lot of people are afraid of judgment, of judgment day. Whenever we, you know, we think about people holding signs that say, the end is nigh, and, you know, like fire, you know, fuego painted on the picture, and, and we just think like the day of judgment is just this horrible, awful day. But I want you to think about this. Imagine this for a moment. Imagine our justice system, every single crime that was committed went cold. Justice was never served. Think about all the cases. Let's say every single case of a crime that was ever committed, every single case went cold. There was never a resolution. There was never a, there was never a way to serve justice. All of the wrong and evil and wicked that was done was done without punishment. It was just fine. There's no problem. And all of the innumerable amount of people that were victims to all of these things had to just go on. God is a God of justice. And just as insane as that sounds, like to think that we would have a justice system that would not actually deliver justice, that anybody could do whatever they want and they would not have to experience any consequences, just as ridiculous as that sounds to us, that sounds even more ridiculous to God. God is a God of justice. And when you experience pain, when you experience injustice, when, when that abuse happened and nobody else saw and nobody else knew and you didn't tell anybody, God saw it. And on the day of judgment, there will be justice for you. God fights for you. God cares about you. He's a good father. He's not going to let just bad things happen to you. And it, it doesn't matter. He's not that kind of dad. He loves you and he cares about you. And on the day of, of judgment, justice will be served. The day of judgment is absolutely terrifying to people who will receive that justice. But check this out for every single person who puts their faith in Jesus, they are justified by the blood of Jesus, the blood that was spilled on the cross. They no longer have to suffer the consequences for their choices, for the things that they have done. And I I, I would think that a lot of you watching today are in that category. You're justified by the blood of Jesus. So for you, the day of judgment is not something to be afraid of. It is something that we could, be, we could rejoice in and we could look forward to. The only thing that a follower of Jesus should be afraid of on the day of judgment, it's, it's, not, it's not fear that we'll be cast out, that we'll be thrown out of the house. It's fear that we will look into the eyes of our Father and realize that we lived our lives without knowing how loved we actually were. That is the fear. It's the fear that we wouldn't, that we didn't live fully in his love when we were here. It says in 1 John, um, there is no fear in love. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. If we are afraid, if we are afraid of for the fear of punishment, it is, it is because we have not yet experienced his perfect love. 
So the key there, you need to know how much he loves you. Let's circle back. I'm about to end. What wonderful day are you looking forward to? Um, if it's not Jesus' return, I can't make any promises to you this morning. I can't promise you that you're going to get a raise. I can't say that God declares you're going to get debt-free soon. I can't declare, I can't say that. I can't promise that. What I can promise you with 100% confidence is that Jesus is coming back. And if your hope is in him, all of these things that we just discussed will be applied to you and you can have that incredible hope where all of the things that we hope in in this life will disappoint when you put your hope in the Lord, you won't be disappointed. It's been the bottom line of this series. I want to pray for you. Um, Are you here this morning and you've been putting your hope in other things? Maybe you are beginning to experience some serious disappointments. And you're beginning to see that, man, I need to put my hope in something a lot bigger, a lot more foundational than just someday life is going to be a little better for me. There's no better day than today to put your hope in Jesus. If you would like to become a follower of Jesus today, if you would like to give your life to him, I'm going to invite you to make that decision by just praying after me and having the first conversation with God, with me. And if you would like to do that today, just repeat after me. Everybody watching, you can do that too. Encourage those making that decision today. So if you'd like to do that, just repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, I believe that you are God. I put my hope in you. I give you my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sin make me right with you. I choose to follow you starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made that decision today, I am just so excited and glad and I celebrate with all of heaven that you you are a part of this. You are a part of the victory that Jesus that Jesus did for us on the cross and welcome to the family. And I just encourage you, uh, take a second and fill out the online connect card because when you give your life to Jesus, you become a part of his family. His family is the church. So you need to meet the members. You need to be part of this thing. So fill out the connect card and uh, and we will connect with you. We'll pray for you and uh, we'll do this together. I also want to pray for you if you're here and you have you have lost sight of the return of the king. You've started to put your hope in the things of this life. A good sign is you're really disappointed. You're really down. You're letting life get get on you. It's just not going the way you think. Guess what? If, If your hope is just Jesus come back, you will be lifted up. If that is you, if, if, uh, if you feel like, man, I want to set my sight back on Jesus, I think the celebration of Pentecost Sunday, man, especially looking at what's going on in the world, his return is so close. Man, I hope that he comes back to a church with open arms, ready to worship and receive the King. So Jesus, I just pray for all my friends. God, in this family of followers of you, we set our eyes on you again. We look to you, to that wonderful day when Jesus will be revealed. Jesus, we speed your return. Help us, God, to to advance in all the things that you want us to do. Help us pave the way to set the way for you to return. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I, I think Pastor Garen is going to be closing the service. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Pastor CJ, thank you so much. I, I love that you steered our hope to the one thing that cannot be shaken, and that's that Jesus is coming back. That's so good. We just we set our anchor there. That's that's our anchor point. 
And I'm so glad that you are a part of this, this time today. Uh, I wish I could just reach out and shake your hand or give you a side hug or something. But what we can do, if you haven't already, I encourage you to connect. So a couple ways to do that. Yeah, you can just pull out your, your phone real quick and just text new to NFC to 97,000. And that, that will just let, let me know you are here today. And I'll just give you a, a little bit of info. I'll just send you a quick email and uh, help you know what's, what else uh, you can do to move forward in your faith. If you, if you want prayer, man, we want to pray for you. So just text your prayer request, whatever it is, type out your, your prayer request, send it to the number on the screen, and we will pray for you. Our, our staff, will, we, we look for those every, every week at the beginning of the week. We are excited to pray for you. So we're, uh, just take advantage of that. Uh, I am really loving our online Bible studies because I actually have uh, companionship and friendship with, with people uh, that, I, that I haven't been able to be in the same room with, but I'm on Zoom with. <laughs> and so I want to invite you. I'm having such a great time with our online Bible studies. Just go to the website. All this stuff we're talking about, just go to the website. Go to the website, click one of those buttons, and join us. Speaking of opportunities, right now you can, if you're not watching on YouTube, head over to our YouTube channel, or if you're already there, just click on over to the kids' worship service. It's, it's a great time. It's silly at times, and yet it goes right to the Bible. Something good to encourage you and your kids, something good to talk about during the week. Next week, I'm so excited about next Sunday, uh, have your communion elements ready at home. So have, have some juice and have some bread or a cracker or something at home, and we'll receive communion together next week. I'll look forward to seeing you. God bless you. Thanks for being here today. Thank you.